Sure, thanks. Uh, so my name is Petty Jungmann. I'm an associate professor at IMM at the Karolinska Institute, the Institute for uh, uh, Environmental Epidemiology. So I'm a cardiologist, uh, clinical cardiologist, and a researcher on different environmental exposures and how they affect health. And that includes heat, air, air pollution, noise, and um, and uh, green spaces and other other environmental exposures. Well, um, it's a easy question, but a hard hard to answer because um, uh, the, the human body has uh, a lot of uh, capacity for adaptability and not just the body. I mean, we, we create our, the environments around uh, us that we live in to, to adapt to higher, um, to, to different environments, including higher temperatures. But you could say that um, uh, as you know, Martin Sturm uh, was talking about uh, in his previous lecture, this has lots of different consequences when it comes to to um, droughts and wildfires and, and other things that it will affect um, us health. And I think, you know, the things that we can think about, I mean, obviously with heat waves, we see a lot of um, excess deaths. And some of these are, you know, from heat exhaustion, but that is really the minority of cases. So, uh, and what happens there is that we actually lose the capability of, of keeping our, um, we lose that we get a circul circulatory collapse from uh, inability to maintain 37 degrees, right? So um, uh, basically, we can't um, get rid of uh, of the heat. But um, there's on top of that, there's a lot more people that die from respiratory disease or cardiovascular disease. So we sort of people who are already vulnerable will tip over into um, uh, these different um, types of of health outcomes. So we'll be seeing a lot more of that. But And when we look at um, heat, for example, across the world, when we look at studies of, of uh, heat on, and health, we do see that um, there are different optimal temperatures. So it's, it's quite contextual. So something that is hot for us here in Sweden will not be as particularly um, um, dangerous in, in a setting where you are used to those kinds of, and that could be, that could be biological adaptability, but it could also be the, 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 the living environment and working environment that is adapted so that we can, we can um, uh, work in these conditions. And there's also the, you know, slow moving and fast moving things. So if, if we see gradual buildup of temperatures or in the beginning of, it, of a heat wave, and in the middle and the end, it, it'll have different effects on how quickly we, we get um, ill. And then on top of that, I think, you know, with these temperatures that we're talking about, we're, we will be seeing, um, you know, different kinds of pandemics. We'll see more infectious uh, uh, diseases. We'll see more um, different uh, pollen uh, coming in in areas that we haven't seen before. So we'll see more allergies and, and asthma. So it's a number of different um, effects that we should expect on human health with um, with increasing temperatures, um, and you know, with 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 flooding, you you might see more mold, for example, and uh, and food security could be obviously affect health as well. So there's there's just really um, a lot of different um, ways that this could could affect us. So I wouldn't focus just only on the extreme temperatures, but it's you know all that variation and all these other. Um, effects around it that, that uh, will have um, spinoffs on, on health. Uh, yeah, and I think that's what is happening in some of these discussions. You know, we, we will see um, different types of um, insects and mosquitoes, for example, that will be spreading further and further north. And we've already seen some of that um, going on. So and that how that will affect health, there's, there's indications of, of what we might be going, moving in towards, but putting actual numbers, uh, I think, is, is challenging at this stage. But you're right, that's one way of, of, of at least shedding some light on it. Okay, thank you so much.